All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to uh, Monday's video. I'm actually recording this on Sunday. Uh, for a lot of reasons, I'm going to be starting to probably record most videos uh, a day early, simply because of work schedule and all that, and real life. Anyway, today we're actually going to be talking about one of the more important races in uh, Virginia's state legislative election this year, uh, the House of Delegates election, right? Which is what we call our state uh, House of Representatives, is the House of Delegates. And we're actually looking at, hilariously, the district I live in. And I'm not saying the this is the most important to pump up this district. It, it actually is an incredibly important district for control of the House of Delegates. Um, and before we get too far into it, I am going to be uh, asking once again for your support. Uh, channeling Bernie Sanders there. Ugh, disgusting. Um, in all seriousness, um, likes, comments, subscriptions, they always do help, and I greatly, greatly appreciate them. And I hope that... Uh, you all recognize that it does help the channel grow and that it, you know, in increases community participation in this channel. So I, I thank you for that. And sorry about no video on Friday. I just had a lot of stuff I was doing and uh, I got home really late uh, because I was spending some time with family. Anyway, what I want to talk about this district in this race is kind of interesting. Oh yeah, by the way, likes, comments, of course they help the algorithm uh, like me and not hate me. And subscriptions as well as clicking the bell icon to get notifications that uh, I greatly appreciate that because it helps the channel grow. I'd love to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and uh, it means that uh, you actually get notifications from our channel and I don't get buried for whatever dumb reason. Anyway, uh, this is a somewhat gerrymandered district. Um, oops. And I'm going to actually go to this and kind of explain this. Um, so it includes, and I wish I could show county lines, but its county lines are mostly Giles County here, running from Rich Creek and Narrows. And that's how you actually say the name of that town. Um, in this little... Uh, salient into West Virginia and it runs all the way down to city of Radford down here and into Blacksburg parts of Blacksburg as well as parts of Christiansburg um, and like I said this is my district this is this is the general area in which I live anyway um, it actually interestingly enough avoids uh, kind of an important piece right there. But anyway, uh, and it's a battleground district. And I'm not saying that because, well, you would think being so far out into Southwest Virginia, the Appalachians and all that, you'd think, well, wait a second here. How is this a competitive district? Well, it has two college towns in it and some pretty well, I'll say left-leaning parts of uh, Montgomery County, including uh, certain parts of Christiansburg, which is a, isn't is necessarily uncompetitive, but it is certainly a an area that is definitely metropolitan and fairly swingy. Um, but it does tend to lean blue, so it's got all of Giles County, parts of Pulaski County, and that's how you say the name of that county. I know it's not spelled that way. If it was given the, and even if you say Pulaski, which is the way most people from outside the state would say it, or even from different parts of the state, um, that's not even the original Polish way to say it, because it's named after someone whom I've done a video on, um, who is affectionately in this area known as Count Count Pul uh, Pulaski. Um, but I've done the video on Kezumarish Pulaski, so I'll leave that there. 
So currently the incumbent delegate is Democrat Chris Hurst, who is actually pretty big because he's an anchor for the local news channel based out of Roanoke, um, the CBS uh, local affiliate, right? But he is kind of unpopular in the area. And you'd say, well, wait, if he's the incumbent, why is he popular? Well, there's the reason for that is because of an incident um, that happened. It was either very early last year or in uh, 2019 after the election. I think it was actually pretty early last year, uh, sometime in the middle of the year, where he was driving on Route... Uh, 460, and I'll actually zoom in to where he got pulled over, and this is actually all within the news story about his, uh, about this incident, and he was escorted by the cops into the parking lot, uh, parking lot of the Walmart right here. Right? So he was brought into this. Now, this happened very late at night. And anyway, so he was brought over there. And the cop asked him to get out of the vehicle. And it turns out he's a drunk driver. Unfortunately, um, he suffered no repercussions for this. Because the state legislature was in session And apparently, uh, you're only allowed to arrest a member of government in Virginia if they commit a, uh, when the legis when, when the government is in session, whichever government they're a part of is in session, if they commit a felony. And apparently, drunk driving is not a felony in Virginia. Um, so he effectively got away with drunk driving, not even getting a ticket. And. Yeah, that breeds a decent amount of animosity towards him. Um, and in the area, he has a bit of a reputation among, well, admittedly conservative voters. I don't think Democrats really care all that much about this part. But he, and even independents, I don't think, really care about this. Um, he kind of uses an incident from his personal life to get pity votes. Now, I'm not going to be trying to, uh, you know, bash him for having a deep, deep personal tragedy because what happened to him shouldn't happen to anyone. Um, and I'm not going to be going too vocal against this because at the end of the day, it's, uh, you try to attack him for trying to get pity votes that's that's worse than um that's worse than him trying to get them for this incident i'm not even going to speak about it too much but if you look up chris Hurst and actually do research on him you'll understand kind of what i'm saying some of his ads kind of lean way too far into that and it's the reason he got into politics to begin with so uh ugh. anyway um I'm not going to be giving too many insider details on this race simply because I'm kind of involved in the campaign. Not even really involved, but I'm definitely going to be campaigning against Delegate Hurst because at the end of the day, I don't think he's a good representative for this district. Um, and I definitely don't think he should keep his job. I think he should have resigned uh back when he got pulled over for, for the DUI. Um, I think that's one of the worst crimes you can commit. One of, trust me, there's plenty that are worse than that, but it's up there for the nonviolent crimes. Um, but the challenger is veteran, Marine veteran Ballard. Uh, it's Jason Ballard. And he, Ballard is a native of the region. Hurst, like I said, he kind of actually moved to the district. Um, 
because I believe he was living in Roanoke. But anyway, um, Ballard is from the town of, uh, where is it, Parisburg, right over here. And he's not just a veteran, a Marine veteran. He was sent over to the Middle East four different times on combat tours. And he's currently a practicing attorney. And his name recognition is not great, to be honest with you, because he's really only well known in Giles County. But a lot of the outreach is kind of going out in Blacksburg, Christiansburg, and Radford. Um, and I do know that the GOP in this area is going to be heavily focused on attacking Hearst. I can't say that much. And he's one of the easier uh, candidates to attack. But this, if the GOP runs its campaign actively and accurately, um, absolutely has the opportunity to help flip control of the House of Delegates. Um, trying to actually remember exactly. But yeah, no, this is the State Senate, which is kind of weird. I think I accident, I screwed, I, I messed that up by picking a State Senate map. So I'm actually going to change the map. State legislatures, the lower, let's go to Virginia. And it's going to take a little bit to load. But the State Senate map is also pretty gerrymandered. So, uh, R should reset it. And I'll go ahead and give my rating for the race as well. And like I said, I, there is a little bit of insider information I do have on the race. Um, and when we get to it, I'll be talking about the uh, gubernatorial election. Okay, so that's just almost entirely Roanoke. So we know that's going to be Democratic. Uh, this district over here, right under the 12th, this, is, uh, this district is centered around Floyd and the rest of Pulaski County. And I've actually met the... I want to say she's become the GOP nominee for that district, um, but I'm not 100% positive she won the nomination. Um, actually, I really like going to the barbecue joint that her family owns, because I, I love barbecue. But, uh, <laughs> uh, to be honest, this is a decent pickup opportunity for the GOP. By the way, uh, these districts are effectively... This isn't necessarily safe Republican, but it's pretty damn Republican. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what the map looks like. Uh, that's Charlottesville. I think the rest of it includes enough of other counties that it's not really a concern for the GOP. Um, okay. Uh, this is where we start getting into competitive territory, but I think uh, these are also reasonable. Eh? There's a hundred seats, and uh, you know what? I'm going to pull this tab off. I'm going to try to see which districts are that. But because I know that's Roanoke, I know that one's blue. Um, the Richmond districts, I know for a fact, are also blue. Here we go. Ah. 
actually this is loading a lot faster so I'll know that one pretty shortly all right here we go yeah I was, I was right okay so about these um, and like I said I'm dead certain Charlottesville is okay, this one is currently controlled by the Republicans that is a, a potential pickup for Okay. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I think uh, some of the. Okay, this is an old map that I'm looking at. Uh, here we go. This. No, that's the old map. Does Ballopedia have an accurate map? This way I can actually explain why the 12th is so... Um, important. Why is there no map? Okay. Uh, shock that. Balladopedia isn't even helping me. Good lord. I'm sorry I'm taking so much time to make sure about I'm getting this correctly, but okay, so here we go. Perfect. So I'm going to highlight just the districts. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the red districts are pretty easy. I'm surprised that one's red. Somewhat surprised, not, not completely. And the rest of those are blue. This one's red. And these three are red. That's it. The rest of that is all blue. So I'm going to kind of explain. why the thinking is that the 12th is important for the GOP's hopes of recapturing the House of Delegates. Right? So, the GOP, wow, almost fell over. I think they have some ideas about maybe flipping one or two of the districts in this area. Let's just hypothetically say they can maybe win some Prince William County area districts and the other Loudoun County area district as well as maybe a Henrico, uh, not a Henrico, but a yeah, a Henrico County district. Let's say they can do that, but let's let's pump the brakes before we get too far into it. Uh, was it this district? Yeah. There we go. So currently the Dems have a 55-45 advantage. So let's say the Republicans do 
flip the 12th over here. They're going to have to hold on to every district, by the way, which with Virginia Beach um, is not the easiest task. But it's doable, right? It is doable. They also have to hold the Eastern Shore, by the way, which does have a little bit of this part of Norfolk, right? Also need to flip, like I said, probably Hampton Roads Area District. Probably Prince William County Area District or two. And actually, it's going to wind up needing to be three Nova Districts. Four to take outright control. But if the GOP can't take the 12th, that really hinders them. Because if, we, if the GOP cannot take the 12th, cannot win the House of Delegates map. It's just not doable. And that actually does bring me to my rating <coughs> Ooh, shit, sorry, on the 12th Congre uh, on the 12th House of, uh, yeah, the 12th House of Delegates District. And I think Hearst is way too easy to attack for the drunk driving incident. And that once Ballard gets name recognition, he should be able to flip the district. Because from that point on, it's really about turnout. Turnout specifically in Giles County. Because Christiansburg and Blacksburg, well, Blacksburg is almost certainly going to vote for Hearst. But, key proviso. How many students return in both Blacksburg and Radford to the universities? Because if turnout amongst those groups is very low, it's going to tremendously hurt Hearst. But it's also import, it, important to remember that if there's not a ton of students, turnout's not going to be very high anyway. Uh, Christiansburg is definitely the swingy part of, of the district along with hilariously city of Radford um, because the city is about, it's kind of even politically speaking. It's really just who turns out more voters. Um, as well as when the election happens. And in this case, it depends on how many students return in person and actually have their voter registration in the city. Um, that'll make that uh, difference. I think given how... I think given that... Hearst is such a weak candidate because of his own personal scandal and how competitive the district is anyway it's I'm going to lean it towards Ballard but I do understand that if the Democrats do get the turnout they need out of Blacksburg and Radford it's going to be very hard for Ballard to overcome that even if they're able to even if the GOP is able to maximize uh turnout in Giles County to the level they think they can and are aiming for. Um, but obviously there's a few other races that need absolutely need focus on for the GOP in order to take the chamber. I don't really think that's one of the big flips they can make, but it just depends on which seats they can flip in Nova as well as which seats they can flip in uh, Henrico, as well as maybe in the Norfolk area. Um, and obviously holding on to every other district, uh, every other district that the GOP currently controls, which is not a given, by the way. Um, so, kind of important proviso there. I think there is a path for the GOP to take the House of Delegates, um, but I think that it requires a little bit 
of heavy lifting in Northern Virginia as well as Tidewater and Richmond in order to truly flip it. But the GOP needs every pickup it can, and the easiest pickup opportunity is the 12th district. But since we're focusing on the 12th, that's my rating for it. I'd lean it towards the Republican, Jason Ballard, and uh, I. Th- and that's mostly because of how weak of a candidate Chris Hurst is uh, currently. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching, and I'm sorry I faffed around a little bit too much trying to find an accurate map of the current situation in the House of Delegates, but uh, that's what happened. Take it easy, y'all. Have a very lovely evening. I'll see y'all next time.